obviously impact was designated as an essential service provider during the initial um, lockdown period in March. But taking the economic impact of the pandemic into account, I'd assume, well, as you mentioned, that business was still down. So what mitigating measures has the company taken with regard to the pandemic? And what sort of recovery path um, in terms of returning to pre-COVID levels um, is the company currently on? So, well, I, in terms of our response to the pandemic from an operational point of view, I'll start with that. You know, our first priority has been to secure the health and safety and wellness of our employees. Um, that's been done very effectively. I mean, as you can imagine, a company like ours has very strong uh, pre-existing health and safety measures across all operations. And those were bolstered by the appointment of COVID compliance officers, um, a number of measures in the business to enable social distancing in a more effective manner, um, changing of shifts to uh, ensure we had continuity in the event of COVID cases coming up. Um, all of those things have contributed to ensure, ensuring in the first instance the safety and health of our employees, but secondly also um, continuity of business to enable us to supply our customers. Um, so that's been very beneficial. We've also um, made a, a very strong effort to engage our customers you know, via the new means, you know, many customers are unable to see you face to face, but they've been most willing to have uh, calls like this one we're having. Um, and we've engaged on that basis. We haven't stopped, I must say, you know, for the month of April, it was a case of uh, just surviving the first three weeks. But uh, soon into that period, we decided as a company that we have to reorganize ourselves to be able to carry on um, as though this is a new normal. So to give you some examples, we didn't cancel a single uh, meeting uh, or, or interaction because of COVID. We didn't cancel. We, in, in, in April, we didn't do our internal audit program, for example, as we'd planned. But we tasked our internal auditors, for example, to carry on with their program as they would have from May. You know, make a plan, make it work. We had quite a big implementation of an ERP system in our recycling business. You know, the first inclination is, oh, it's going to be difficult to complete it on time because of COVID. We said, we're going to make a plan and the guys completed it. It was completed at the end of July. So that mentality, I think, permeated the whole organization. Um, and I think uh, that has helped us to continue operating and as importantly, to continue uh, uh, supplying to our customers. There have been some operations that have been affected as non-essential, you know, producing certain products that were non-essential. Like one of our businesses focuses almost exclusively on quick service restaurant packaging. So they were down for the best part of two months. In that time, they did spend uh, quite a bit of effort uh, on product development. So, you know, the latest product that's come out is uh, a tamper-proof or tamper-evident or tamper-proof uh, home delivery bag for fast food, um, which has been very well accepted in the market. Um, and that's now in the market. So, you know, that time was maybe idle from a factory or machine point of view, but it wasn't an idle from a thinking or development point of view. And we are seeing some of those benefits come through. In terms of the, uh, let's call it recovery, I think it's fair to say that for the most part, uh, the economy is going to take a very long time to recover um, in general. However, there are some parts of our business that might see some form of U uh, recovery or maybe even a V in certain cases um, for various reasons. So fruit obviously is one that's exported products. Uh, maybe there's not a recovery required there because the exports have continued and we actually grew in fruit this year. But uh, a good example is in July, we launched our first composter. You know, it's a plastic composter, you know, about 700 uh, millimeters high. And uh, we're supplying that to the city of Cape Town. We're supplying it to the residents, you know, in the tens of thousands. Um, that's a new product. And uh, that's part of our, our theme of closing the loop. You know, we have uh, we are closing the loop in every aspect. So we've got the new composter that's come to the market. We've got a number of new paper punnets that have come to the market to complement our plastic punnet range. Those are being well accepted into the market. We exported already a million into Europe. Uh, paper punnets last year and, and earlier this year. So those are new products that uh, hopefully give us something to hold on to in this time. And then of course, we've got our recycling streams, which are under pressure, you know, because we, we collect and, and sell glass recyclates, um, but with the lick industry being uh, closed, uh, we, we're not uh, doing great volumes there. But there are other things that we are, are, are developing there. So it's uh, from an economic point of view, very difficult, but uh, that doesn't say that we are not uh, working hard to try and find alternative avenues to still deliver um, in these times. 
Um, I know you mentioned some of the um, some of your products that have actually been affected um, during this this lockdown period, but I'd like to just maybe briefly touch on um, on alcohol specifically. I know you do manufacture some packaging products for alcohol. What sort of impact has the the ban actually had on your business? I mean, I know Console Gloss, for example, actually recently cancelled over a billion rands worth of investments owing to their business being severely impacted by this. Yes. So we're not a we don't uh, make primary uh, alcohol packaging. So primary packaging would be the bottle or you know the container that it actually carries um, for alcohol. And we make the secondary packaging. So we'd make boxes for wine, for example. You know, the wine, the wine, the, 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 the bottles go in. We'd make the trays for beer and so on and so forth. So the impact has not been anywhere near what you're seeing across the business. To give you an example, in the second quarter, our revenue was down approximately six and a half percent um sorry our, our volumes on six and a half percent compared to the same period last year so that gives you some sense of of, of the scale you know because that's not only alcohol that's qsr and so on and so forth um so we're not planning at this stage any restructuring as a consequence of that we do think that alcohol sales will be instituted or reinstituted at some at some stage hopefully soon um, and so we will need that capacity and we will need all of those people. But there's no doubt if you're a, a person with a kiln like a consul and others, uh, this is a very, very trying time. And, uh, you know, uh, you know all, 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 all support to them. We know that uh, demand or the impact on demand for other paper and plastic packaging products, um, specifically, you know, stuff like recycled paper, plastic and gloss and the like have been impacted. I mean, and obviously we know that the, the recovery of the economy is going to take quite a while. I mean, will this demand pick up again? I mean, I'd assume so, since packaging is used with basically everything we need um, and use um, in our daily lives. Yeah, I'd say, are you talking about demand for packaging generally? or? Uh, yes, uh, just demand for, for packaging in general um, and, and obviously the, the products that uh, your, yeah. your packaging is used for. Most of the sectors we're in, I think, are sectors that people are, 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 are buying goods for every day. So I think that's uh, that's that's clear. Um, what we are seeing in some of the primary products, or let's call it the uh, base materials that we produce, like container board and carton board, um, the global industry is in a state of uh, oversupply. And so while there might be demand, there's an oversupply, which means your margins are going to be under pressure for a period. Um, and I don't think that's going to change uh, in the next six months. So we will be under pressure in the paper business uh, because of the oversupply of container board. But in terms of the demand for packaging, uh, paper and plastics, I think we could still expect it to be reasonable. Uh, there will be changes. You know, in one of our businesses, it makes jars and tubs and, and, and bottles for the fast-moving consumer goods industry. Our volumes are up 15% on last year, as an example. You know. Um, in our trays and films business, uh, right in the beginning of the lockdown, uh, my colleagues there did a fantastic job to design face shields. You know, there's many face shields in the market, these PET face shields, and some of them were very sort of uh, uh, slapped together. But this one's a very well-made um, face shield made out of PET and polypropylene, um, and we've sold over one and a half million of those face shields in three months. So, you know, and we donated 25,000, for example, to the to the Department of Health. We've donated 6,000 to the Waste Reclaimers in Association with Packaging South Africa and also RecyclePaper.co.za. Um, and so, you know, those are new products. So I think they, you could expect to see demand, but what you are going to see coupled with that is overcapacity in various sectors. And that's going to mean that margins will remain under pressure. And that's where innovation uh, counts. You know, as uh, Ellen Kuhlman, the CEO of DuPont, or the former CEO of DuPont once said, in the absence of innovation, price can only go down. And so a lot of our efforts are really around innovating and uh, trying to bring something different so that you can uh, not just see a decline in price on every, every, every day. Perfect. That's it for my set of questions. Is there anything um, in particular that you'd like to add or maybe highlight for us? Um, I think you've covered everything pretty well. You know, I, I just re-emphasize the, uh, the the thanks and the gratitude we have uh, for our for our employees, um, our suppliers, and our customers through this time. And uh, they can be assured that we are there for the long run, and we will do everything we can to make sure that they're supplied and that to make sure that our business is able to 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 take in the product that it's ordered.